welcome to the RT Podcast. This show is sponsored by, brought to you by ExpressVPN. You know them, you love them. Keep your location private from the strangers you game with online at expressvpn.com slash RTTV. I'm Barbara. I'm Gavin. I'm Chris. And I'm Jessica. And I'm Barbara. We are gustless this week. I Gus? feel it in my heart. He, I know he took last week off uh, for like a little vacation, and I think maybe he just wanted to extend it into today. <laughs> <laughs> also, did that Good intro uh, hurt anyone else's eardrums massively, or was it just me? I didn't hear shit. I just oh. lowered my volume on everything, so I didn't hear it as loud. All I know is yeah, that at the beginning of this, I just went into Discord and muted Jessica, but <laughs> everything else is fine. Can you hear me? You fucking piece of shit fucking oh, shit no <laughs> okay he's laughing he's laughing so, <laughs> so are we going to talk about the topic of the day armadillos Ar- armadillos <laughs> wait what <laughs> all right well i'm gonna have to want to talk about this crack a beer for that one go ahead chris well i i just i came in some thing and y'all were talking about armadillos and whether or not we're talk about them and i said yeah let's talk about them right i don't know what, what was there to talk about well i had a moment earlier with eric where he sent me the link to this um you know where we joined to do the podcast and we can see each other's faces mm-hmm. and the conversation before that was just stacks of other links so i was like man this is all we talk about eric and it's just like links to vmix so he was like throwing Aww. out suggestions of the other things that we could talk about. So we between talk YouTube. About, between, between, yeah, you between us yeah. two. So we started talking about armadillos. And then I said, maybe we should just stick to the links. And then that was it. We just ended it right there. But I haven't seen a living armadillo yet. You haven't? No. Ever. Maybe it is zoo, but I never just like out and about. I've seen I don't like know a, they have hmm. armadillos at zoos. Of course do they, they do. Every animal's in a zoo. What do you do, mean? Do they? I'm going to Google That's this. Not- I don't think every animal is in a zoo because then there would be that'd be like hundreds and thousands <laughs> yeah. of animals. Like well, they, they don't have zoos friggin' like animals. they don't have hamsters at zoos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do. There's a hamster they, in a well, zoo about, somewhere. Don't they should have armadillos in British <laughs> zoos? Well, that was the thing. Like I went to a, a German zoo once with Meg, and she was like, "Oh my god, a bunch of raccoons have got into this enclosure." And I was like, "No, there's just no raccoons here. That's that, that's the thing that we're looking at raccoons." <laughs> so according to Google, I just googled, "Are there armadillos in zoos?" <laughs> and this is what it says: Most armadillos in zoos live longer, which doesn't again answer my question. So I guess yes, there are. However, the pink fairy armadillo rarely lives more than a few years in zoos, so little is known about this species. There are get- 20 species of armadillos, by the way, in case you're wondering. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I want to learn they, about it, the, the pink chat fairy. says they carry leprosy. They do. <laughs> <laughs> do they really? What? Mm-hmm. And armadillos got- just walking around with like a biblical disease? <laughs> well, it's like it's like koalas carrying chlamydia. Yeah, but cl- cl- chlamydia is still about, isn't it? We still deal with that. <laughs> you have it, yeah. No. <laughs> Well, I guess no one ever gave the antibiotics to the armadillos. I don't know. <laughs> we should, though. Yeah, we should. Did, did you guys know that there are parrots in, in Austin? Like wild like parrots. parrots? Yeah, wild parrots. Um, no. I... Jessica, we're supposed to be talking about armadillos, not parrots. <laughs> All right, my bad. My bad. Get back, get back sorry, to Sorry, sorry. No, was... wait. Tell me about... I didn't mean... I did uh, not know there no, were parrots. I'd, I'd rather talk about armadillos anyway, because those are a lot cooler. <laughs> Um, no, there really are. Um, I just looked it up the other day. Hold on. So keep talking about armadillos and I'll bring up the article. I think you can bring shoot, up the article. I think you can shoot an armadillo with a gun and it'll bounce the bullet back. Don't it's shoot that I'm not saying to do that. I'm not Did telling you to do that. people who came up with that also come up with like you can, you can pull a, an earthworm in half and it becomes two worms? Is that the same guy? <laughs> I actually heard that as a kid. If you if you like step on or like crush a worm and it splits in two, it becomes two worms. Yeah. Well, there's, Is that there... not true? No. <laughs> but there... <laughs> but... Well, I no, literally no. grew up believing that. Well, because I think on one end is the mouth and it just like, you know, just pulls mud through itself. But on the other end is just an anus. I don't think it can work backwards unless there is worms sort of chomping up with their anus and then puking out the mud. But I'm pretty Do sure it's just have... one worm. Do you guys have stuff like I, I was taught that as a kid and I believed it up until uh, 31 years old. Uh, is there anything that you were taught or that you believed as a child that 
like you believed for a lot of your life. Like stuff like if you cross your eyes and someone hits you at the back of the head, your eyes will stay that way. I was taught that as a kid, which I know is wrong. I mean, there's yeah, like the it didn't, gum one. It didn't take one. me 31 years to figure that one out. Um, I think it's maybe the swallowing <laughs> watermelon seeds or swallowing gum, I would, I would either grow a watermelon, I learned that from Rugrats, but I believed that for a very long time. To this day, I still don't swallow the seeds. I mean, you shouldn't, but I mean, if you do, <laughs> I freak out a little bit. Um, but like, like swallowing gum, I know some people just swallow their gum like it's nothing, and I'm like, I don't want my poop to be sticky or just weird. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I, I used to swallow my gum when I was a kid until someone told me it takes seven years, and then I stopped. So I think that's just something people made up to get kids to stop swallowing gum. But to the important topic, Texas man hospitalized after bullet bounces off armadillo. Uh, <laughs> this was in 2015. There's a lot of people in the chat saying if you shoot an armadillo, you'll kill it. So don't do it. Well, I'm it. not saying to shoot either way. It's bad. Either it's going to bounce. <laughs> a, a Texas man, either you're going to get shot by yourself because it bounced it back or you're going to kill an armadillo. So just don't shoot armadillos. <laughs> if you have a craving yeah. to shoot an armadillo, maybe reconsider the fact that you own a gun. <laughs> maybe yeah. Yeah. get some, some help with that. <laughs> but ex yeah. Yeah, especially don't shoot armadillos. Or yeah, anything. The, yeah. the really. way the way to kill an armadillo, you get a machete, right? <laughs> I actually wouldn't. I wouldn't even know where to start. If I had to kill one, I would. I don't know how you catch one. I don't, I don't know, know how I catch one either. Did any you know of you guys I'll also? <laughs> <laughs> Were any of you guys told as kids too by your parents that uh, if you put like the the car light on while you're driving, yeah. like they can't see or like you're gonna get arrested or something like that? Yeah, Did I was always parents... told that was illegal. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. Is it? I, no, it's not. I think it is like a bit distracting because it does, you can see the reflection of it, but mm, I don't mm -hmm. think you get pulled over for it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I think, think it's uh, it. You guys want to hear about the parrots, fear. parakeets? No. Oh, okay, here we Oh, okay. I thought you had me <laughs> muted. I thought I was muted. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Muck parakeets may be native to the subtrop. <laughs> All right, wait. I can't see him because I'm reading the article. Is he doing something dumb? No, no, I was just He's laughing. Just... I was okay. laughing at you trying to get through that. You're doing very well at it. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Monk parakeets may be native to the subtropics of South America, but over the last 40 years, they found a home in Austin. Although their exact origin is disputed, it's accepted that in the early 1970s, 1970s parakeets were either released in the Zilker area or escaped their cages. Whoa. Yeah. Super crazy. They're back I to saw the, the other. I saw one the other. I was like, there's a green bird on top of that light pole. I was like, what the hell is that? Looked it up. Try well, okay. Oh, just go. a parrot. Yeah. There's trying to shoot down this parakeet conversation has been like trying to shoot an armadillo. That's all I got. I'm out. <laughs> oh, man. What time is it? God. Yeah, um, that's a lot of time. Really left. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do you oh, feel man. like you've. I've had. <laughs> I feel like I don't see as many animals nowadays because I don't go out as much. So I don't think about birds. Well, not that I thought much about birds anyway. <laughs> but oh I mean, just in general, like, I feel like my animal interaction is down. Yeah, yeah that would make I mean, sense if you are spending more time inside. Yeah. I mean, what other animals do you interact with on a daily basis before quarantine other than like Dutch? And what other animals? Well, I guess... Bugs. <laughs> bugs. <laughs> See, I've yeah, been noticing bugs. bugs more because there have been, no joke, I think three or maybe now four different wasp nests that have gathered around my place that we've had yeah. to spray mm -hmm. to get rid of. And they just keep popping up. And I don't, yeah. like, I'm sure there's some type of solution. So if anyone has chat in chat has any solutions or you guys have solutions for getting rid of wasps or, like, stopping that them from making nests at your place. Just throw a shoe. Or shoot them. They don't bounce back. <laughs> <laughs> One bullet will take out everyone. <laughs> Just... uh, I, I had, a, I had a, a deer interaction recently, but I, 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 that's probably the most recent wildlife I've encountered. Um, I, I like how you say this as if before quarantine you were experiencing so many wildlife interactions. I'm imagining like that scene in Ace Ventura where he comes back to his apartment and all the animals. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 
it, it came up it came up in uh chump but i didn't really tell it it's, i'll just tell it. uh so i, I had a a friend who was getting uh stalked by a deer um <laughs> and i'm not like i say stalked as in so what had happened is they had been out walking their dog and their dog had attacked a, a fawn, like a little baby deer, and like tried to fight it. And so then, you know, that incident happened. Ever since then, the mama deer would attack her and her dog anytime they saw them. Oh, God. And I mean, like, oh, wow. attack is in like charge, like, <laughs> like going to like, to, to like, to, you know, beat up, beat her up. Sorry, Chris, I wasn't paying attention when you actually imitated what it sounded like. Could you do it like, again? <laughs> well, I mean, I wasn't there. For... <laughs> so, but this was like, it oh, sounds... I wasn't looking. Can you, can you do no, it again? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, 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 it sounds very funny, but like the way they described it was like, it was terrifying as in this person would, they would send me pictures of this deer it's like it's it's waiting behind the building for me. I see it like just like it would just send me a picture of like up on their balcony and they'd be like, it's watching me like in this. It, it'd just be a deer like mean mugging her and be like, <clears throat> like giving so, her. So what she do? Well, she tried to avoid the deer. She'd walk the dog different places, but it would chase it, it would find her. So then um, <laughs> So it then, sounds like a horror story. Yeah. And then, so then she ended up calling like animal control and they were like, oh my well, God. they were like, well, well, it's a deer and it's, it's habitat, it's habitat. It, this is where it lives. We can't really do anything. We're only like, really our specialty is like animals that shouldn't be here, you know? So that's an animal that should be there. Like, yeah. Cause it's like kind of out towards like 360 and stuff, you know? Yeah, I guess they tend to roam around neighborhoods a little more there, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then... Texas! And, yeah, and the reason the reason I, I got into this whole thing, I became part of the deer uh, problem, was because my dad is like... He, 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 he deals with deers. He's like a deer oh, specialist. Oh, he has the deer podcast, right? Yeah, he's got the deer podcast. He, he's literally the guy who wrote the book on deers. Uh, <laughs> like, I've got a deer book. There is my... one book about deers, and he wrote it. <laughs> well, I mean, he wrote a... He's written multiple books about deers. <laughs> So he like, <laughs> like, like that is the most Chris dad thing really, I've ever heard. It really is. It's like it's fantastic. A deer book, you know. So it's like I'm not it's, kidding. Like it's, it's so it's, great. So Wait, great. no, it it looks like he wrote that with someone else. Well, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, it's a, it's a co-writer. Well, he's also written another book, so that's like a full one. Okay, he's got two books, so, half written. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so I was like asking my dad, like, well, what can, and he was like, well, is it, it's in a neighborhood. So he's like, he was going to suggest like, you know, some sort of pepper spray or something. Uh, but Aww. yeah, well, it's like, but just, to, but it could, it, it could be, it could run into a street and it danger itself. And then, and then, it, and then he suggested an air horn or something to scare it. But then she was like, already tried that. Uh, and then it kept escalating because she would like, she'd like have to. She was out walking and she had to like run into the street to get away from it and like wave down a car like she was being attacked and like oh, I need help 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 and then like jumped into someone random's car because the deer was waiting on the other side of the street and had to drive oh her to Oh my god, this is like a horror movie. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then so she so, so it, it kept happening. She had to wave down two cars two different times. So she called uh she called she called uh, ni- uh 311 like the police. And was like what do I do? This deer's trapped me. And then so it sounds like a, don't know. more of a nine one one situation than a three one one. Well, yeah, three one one is a non emergency yeah, line for emergency. those who don't know. Well, I he think didn't she just didn't want... say nine one one wrong. <laughs> well, I, no, no. Well, she said I think because I don't I don't think she wanted to be like oh there's like people who are getting like you know like someone might I don't know she called she called three one one maybe the deer wasn't chasing her at this time. I don't know if she was like the deer's all like running actively calling 911 or could she could have been from a hiding spot i don't know a p- officer showed up and they're like well, i'll just you know avoid the deer said, i'm trying and he's like well stop provoking it. it's like i'm not doing anything to provoke it it's chasing me and the, and the officer's like well i don't know what to tell you <laughs> like because again d- deers aren't really their specialty 
Um, Eric Padua pointed this out in, in our chat, but <laughs> you keep saying deers. You know, deer is the plural of deer, right? Well, what's deers? De deers? I mean, you should know your dad wrote the book. <laughs> but I wrote the book on deers. Oh my god! What do you mean, deers? Deers. Deers. deers? deers as well. This is what's just the, fantastic. What's the singular form of deer? Deer on. Deer. <laughs> no, it's, it's just deer. It's like it's like moose. No, it isn't. What, what is it? It's a doe. It's a doe. No, that's a, f a female deer. Well, is it a was, female deer? Yeah, yeah. It so was a female a deer because it had a fawn. Anyway, so this doe is chasing her. Um, <laughs> and she calls like the parks, uh, the, like the parks department. And no one will, no one will take care of the deer, the doe problem. Uh, so then one time, <laughs> Sorry. one time she got trapped and called me, and I. Uh, and I was like, well, okay, I'll, uh, whatever. I show up and I'm like, I, you know, escort to the, uh, uh, to her apartment. And I'm like, go get me, um, a, 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 a broom. <laughs> and, and so I go and I, she comes out with a broom. I'm like, okay, I take the broom part off. So it's just a stick. And I'm like, <laughs> let's go confront the deer. Because you can't keep you can't That'll keep work. well it can't keep terrorizing her, like it there, 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 she has to confront it. <laughs> this must stop. Yeah, well that's what, go on. It had been going on for weeks, and she'd gone. She called everyone that every, and I was like, I don't want I don't want to get called every time that she gets trapped. <laughs> like I can't deal with this dough. Um, so <laughs> so I was like, I was like, <laughs> let's go find it. And then, but she was, she was afraid. I was like, no, we have to go. Where's the deer? Go, where does it frequent? She's like back there. I'm like, let's where's, the, where's the deer doe? Yeah. Yeah. Where, where's yeah. the doe frequent? That's good. Where's there's, oh, well, there's multiple deers. There's multiple <laughs> deers in the area, but there's one doe that's ch stalking her. And so I, I'm like, we have to go there. And she starts sobbing because she's afraid. Aww. And I'm like, come on, we have, we have to, to confront it. And I'm like pulling on the leash with the dog. Like, come on, come on. And she's like, oh, she's like hiding around the corner. I'm like, no, it's, it's, it won't, it won't know to stay away. I'm not going to do anything to the doe, but I just want to be like, Hey, leave us alone. You know, like you keep using doe for like singular deer though. Like I know it was a doe, but you're just, I think cause he doesn't want to have to, to confuse himself with deers or deer. <laughs> yeah. I'm just the doe. So you had this, a dog, Chris, or, or you had just, a bitch. No, no, no. <laughs> it just doesn't sound like any fawn no. at all. No. <laughs> well, yeah, because the dog got the fawn. Um, uh, did anybody, are you done with the story or let, is it still going? Well, what ended up <laughs> happening was we confronted. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hey, all right. Well, let's uh, tell me more about parrots, Jessica. <laughs> no, keep going. Let's, uh, <laughs> the only reason just asked her because. I only asked because I was like, man, I should have been timing this from the beginning. I well, just, that's this amazing thing. This Last time Chris told a story, it, there was one that that lasted about four minutes. So I asked <laughs> someone, I asked someone in the community to cut out all of the irrelevant like, redos and pauses <laughs> to see how long the story actually was. And it was like under a minute, and someone actually edited it for me. It was brilliant. Well, I look for. I look forward to hearing the the the, the director's cut. Did, uh, did you ever see that? It was the one where you woke up it, you were in like someone else's bed for a bit or something. Oh, oh, you know what's a funny thing about that? I I found out recently. Oh God, there's more. Is I woke up and the per, the person who was in the bed with wasn't there. I so forgot that in, you were in someone else's bed without the person who yes. linked you to that person. Yes, that's what I, that's I forgot because I I forgot that detail. That kind of drastically improves the story. It does. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, how did I forget that? I need to know how this confrontation went, though. I need to know okay. if, if the problem with this doe uh -huh. well, is done. So we found a deer in the distance. And so I was like confronting it. I was like, hey, deer, <laughs> like, like trying to scare it so that it wouldn't charge, but also like waving the broomstick. And then it ran away and then it came back and I thought it was going to charge at me. But then I like, I was like, no, 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 it's, it's keeping its distance. So I yelled at it again. And then, and then because the, the, my friend was in the distance as I came back, it's like, see, it's a, it's more afraid. She's like, well, that wasn't the right doe. So it wasn't the right deer, but I think I still made the, I, 
I, so it's still out there. You think word is spread from that one to the one? <laughs> still well, the, the, the thing is, oh, none of the other deer, deers would, none of the other deer would uh, chase. You them. corrected yourself to the wrong one. None of the other deers would chase. It was just that one. So it's an unsolved <laughs> case. Well, why don't you just implore your dad to come and just blast it if it's that much of an issue? Well, I don't think I don't think anyone wants the deer to die. No, of course it's not. An, it just should be in a place that it isn't threatening people's safety. Well, and from 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 what they had researched is that it was it, female deers when, when they have babies are particularly aggressive and have a lot of like testosterone, you know. Or, or not to start whatever anger deer they have anger issues uh and so oh, testosterone yeah uh and so <laughs> it's probably like one of those things where it'll it'll stop chasing once the fawn gets older this episode of the rooster teeth podcast is brought to you by hbo max we've all got that perfect setup for binging our favorite shows i've always got my cozy blanket my snacks my no less than five pillows and then i'm good for three maybe four hours at least and if you're like me, you got to check out the animation lineup they have right now on HBO Max for those binge-watching sessions where there's something for everyone. Want something goofy and fun? You've got Teen Titans and regular show. Do you want something anime action? You've got Kill a Kill and Konosuba. Want something wholesome and amazing? Of course you do. They have all 21 Studio Ghibli films. Mwah. Or Studio Ghibli, maybe. Let me know which one it is. But real quick, here are two of my absolute favorites. First of all, Dexter's Laboratory. If you've never seen the show growing up, maybe you're a little younger than me, but you have to check it out. It's a classic, one of the greatest animated series of all time, uh, and it's all available on HBO Max, so go check it out if you haven't yet. Second would be South Park. Everyone knows South Park, I hope, but if you haven't seen it, also go check it out. Even if you have seen it, who wouldn't want to binge watch South Park all over again? It's absurd, it's hilarious, you got Trey Parker, Matt Stone, they're evil geniuses. They're wonderful. So go check out South Park. Uh, and so right now, you could go to bit.ly slash HBO Max RTP and sign up for a free seven-day trial of HBO Max and enjoy animation of every generation for every generation. Uh, so that's bit.ly slash HBO Max RTP. Go check it out. Thank you, HBO Max. Mm. Okay. It's protective. Mm -hmm. I, it's a, a, a deer like protected I, I feel like deer hunting is very common and tons of people do it yeah is it is there just an abundance of deer to shoot at the moment i don't know i know it's very regulated like i, f I feel like you haven't read the book i haven't <laughs> <laughs> why would he because <laughs> it's his dad i guess yeah support I don't know if if my dad wrote a book about deer. I don't think I would have read it either. I'll, I'll say this: I'll be frank. I don't. Do you think my dad listens to everything I do? Well, I hope not. Yeah, I a hope book, not too. A book but is like a complete piece of work. This is just like continuous, endless content. But a book is like I wrote the book. Done. Okay. Who's who's parent in here other than Chris's dad? Would you guys want to read a book from? I'll I feel like I'd love to read a book from Jessica's mom. Like I feel like that would be really entertaining. I don't know. I feel like she is just a firecracker, and I would love to read whatever she had to write. She is definitely a firecracker. That's for sure. I don't really? even understand her sometimes. Um, Chris, you should read the book, do a book report on it, and then present it to us. Well, no. If I was going to do that, I would get the more recent book. That's an older book. Oh, He's written my bad. more than um, one. Yeah, yeah. I told you, he wrote two. I think. Is there a book, Barbara, that your dad could write that you would read? Like, what subject would you be interested in him writing oh, about? I'm sure my dad has written books because he got his PhD, I believe, in computer science or math. So I think, like, getting your PhD involves writing essentially a lot. So he's probably written a book's worth of things. But <laughs> what my dad's expertise is on is probably something I would not care to read about. No offense, Dad. I know you're probably watching right now. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I don't Gosh. know. Well, the thing is, is like, I like books usually that are uh, fiction. <clears throat> and I feel like my dad would write something very analytical and nonfiction related. So mm -hmm. harsh, maybe. Would you read a book from my dad? From Larry Dunkelman? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd read like at least a third of it. See what it's all about. 
<laughs> I'd read his journal if he took a journal. Well, so like if I got my diary? dad's PhD uh, submission, <clears throat> hey, to you. do you think it. our dad should collaborate on a book? <laughs> like mathematical <laughs> deer? Deer. <laughs> mathematical like deer. inside the mind of a deer. Yeah. And like the why they make decisions, why they do the things that they do. I'm sure that's already been written, but hey. How big is a deer yeah. brain? I don't know. Kevin? Yeah. <sighs> How big? Oh, I'll, up, I'll go to the index and look How up brain. Big? Let's see you guess there first. Uh, a deer's brain is quite a bit smaller than ours, about one sixth the size of a human. Animals brain. have pretty small brains, usually, even the big-headed ones. Hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, they're. Yeah. What's the biggest brain? What do you? What would you guys guess? Probably maybe, maybe a, a whale. Uh, a whale. Or an Let's elephant. See. Right. Uh, so, a sperm whale has the biggest sperm brain of any whale. animal species, weighing up to twenty pounds. I bet seven it's quite kilograms. smooth, though. Oh, I want to. I want to see a sperm whale brain now. Let's. Look, I want to see a brain know. whale sperm. <laughs> it looks like ramen. Does it really? I'm very sperm. nervous typing sperm into my Google image search. <laughs> by the way, sperm whale brain. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like. It does look like. I mean, ramen. it looks. Can it kind of looks like an uncooked Delicious. chicken. Let me, yeah, let me uh, put it into where we could see it. Here we go. <clears throat> Coming in hot. God, those whales are huge. Oh wow, yeah, very similar. What chatter? What chatter you? Hmm. I'm in Discord. Oh yep. As, well, so just, we've we've learned a lot about animals, um, and dads. <laughs> And dads who write about animals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind yeah, of, it kind of is the same thing. When are you going to cut your hair? I don't know. When it's safer to go and get a haircut. <laughs> You're not just going to do it yourself or have Meg do it? Well, yeah, what's the point? I could, I could botch. A sh I mean, it's easier to fix at this length than waiting for shit to grow back that I've botched. Right? You should grow it down to like your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Oh, like when I was 15? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you should get the same posters that you had in that one pick. Yeah, I'll get uh, Kelly Brook. I'll get the famous lesbians. And what was the other one? I don't remember the third one. I don't booze? remember the third one. It was like a booze poster. All I remember are the, the two girls in their underwear on top of each other. Yeah. That one, like, very classic poster. Cat! It's a little oh. cat there, isn't it? Is that Q? Yeah. Getting big. Oh my God. I see the wildlife. <laughs> Speaking of animals. There you go, Chris. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about something today now that we got Jessica here. So, oh. first of all, Jessica, a video of you surfaced on our subreddit of you singing a song from Hamilton, which, by the way, you have a voice of an angel. And if people haven't that, seen wait, that. Wait, that, that, that resurfaced again? Yeah. Okay, I don't, I, I don't have Reddit, or I mean, I have Reddit, but I don't go on it, so I should look that up. Well, okay. uh, go check it out, because uh, it's very sweet, the comments, and I called you a triple Aww. threat queen in that. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> Which you are. Sweethearts. But Hamilton just came out on Disney+, Plus, mm -hmm. which I didn't mm -hmm. know was happening. And everything yeah. I've heard of that musical is that it's phenomenal. It's one of the best ever. People have seen it multiple times. People have paid so much money to go see it. And it comes out and people are tweeting about it and talking about it. And then our friend Andrew has a very <laughs> different take on this show, which I'm curious <laughs> to get your opinion on. Because I know you're a big fan of Hamilton, but Andrew did not seem to enjoy it. Yeah. Have you guys seen it? Have I've, I've seen like 70% have... uh, of it. Okay. I, not, not. not that I didn't like it. I just started it really late, and it's like two hours and forty minutes long. So well, that, that's how they designed it. They they wanted people to leave like two thirds of the way through and then well, come back on a different day. To well, I, it. I well, it could have been like the intermission. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I think I'm gonna watch it tonight. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah. Either. Well, do you like musicals? No. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, I don't really like, like musicals, but I love history. If, so. Like for example, oh, yeah. I think I think Greece is one of the worst things. I actually am not a fan of Greece. Oh well, oh well, oh well. Like well, well 
It's so it's so cringy. I, yes, str- I really struggle to agree. get through that movie. I struggle. I agree with that. Uh, even though I like musicals, I'm not like I don't love all musicals because some are just like I can't I can't do it when they're like, "Hi, I'm walking down the street today." I'm like, "Oh, please be quiet." Yeah. It's a oh, little it's hard horrible. sometimes. Yeah, it makes me cringe. Um, but Hamilton, I don't think, is personally like that. But again, if you don't like musicals, you probably won't like Hamilton because shocker, Hamilton is a musical. I yeah. think I don't. I don't think you're right. I think I'm going to enjoy it. I've got, I've got also, good, good feelings about it. I heard also that yeah. someone was talking about it the other night, and they said that it's a lot more singing than they realize. Like it's oh, barely any actual dialogue; it's mostly mm-hmm. just singing. That's what I was. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be like a lot of musicals have dialogue and then music. Di- and good it's mix, just like yeah. it's pretty much just music. It is. Yeah, it's but, one song to another, and it's just. I honestly didn't know that either. When I listened to the music, that like I listened to the music before I actually saw the play live. And so when I watched it live, I was expecting, I was like, oh, there has to be some sort of, you know, normal dialogue, but there yeah. was not. I was like, oh, okay, here we go. It's music, song to song. But I didn't even notice it. It was perfect. I, I loved it. But yeah, Andrew had a different take on it. Um, Which I would imagine, like, I, I know a lot of people, you're one of them, Mika is one of them, people who love Hamilton and like live and breathe yeah that uh mm-hmm. that musical and to see andrew come out with a take like that where i was like "Ooh, I mean, i've he, never heard anyone shit talk this this he just musical blasted before it. he was like this is awful it's cheesy it's worse was this yeah in a video somewhere that i can watch no it's no, on twitter oh okay. it's on twitter um there, so i mean for people again if you don't like musicals you're gonna be like i hated it i don't like hamilton that's okay that's totally fine i know a lot of people right now are upset in regards to um, the story and how they went about it and Lin-Manuel and his take on that. And I totally understand all that stuff too. But when for me, when it comes down to the actual art of it, the singing, the dancing, uh, the choreography, the lyrics, the music, it, it's like, I don't know if you guys have seen Yisa's Twitter recently, but she said it best. At the time it was made five years ago, it was literally something that we hadn't seen before. Um, especially with a cast full of people of color, it was so fantastic to see. And the music is just, it honestly, Josh Lanigan said it best. There is, there isn't a word or not a word, um, a sentence that doesn't go, um, wasted. Like every single word wow. has a meaning thought behind it, a story to be told. And I'm sure and, also uh, the experience of seeing it live in, in a theater is completely different than watching it on your TV. Uh, at home for sure so. for sure but even seeing it live and then seeing it on the tv they you know they it's a camera so they're up close in your face the entire time or not the entire time there were some moments where they're just like in your face and i felt those emotions like i never felt them when i did see it live so that was really really great um, yeah but because they are rapping in it sometimes if you haven't heard the music before if you watch it for the first time you might miss a lot of the story um, because they're just going so fast. So listening to the music or watching it more I wonder if once. it's a good idea to just watch it with subtitles on. Hmm. I mean, to yeah, like try it. it. Yeah. Maybe. Definitely. But, um, it's good. It's real good if you guys haven't seen it. Yeah, I like so, it. Yeah, I just... I'm gonna watch it. I just, I just want to see you and Andrew just fight to the death. On it I mean, if see. I'm going to be I, like, there are certain things I would have loved to say, but I don't know if this is the right area to say it. I, I do think that there are people out there that like to hate on something just because it's popular and a lot of people like it. Oh, we all I know people like that in our lives. We do. I do think he was kind of being a contrarian in that regard, in my opinion. Um, and it, it was kind of like an elitist way of going and going about it and i was just kind of like where are you where are you getting this from like where did you how do you what no it's just kind of i don't know i thought it was completely off base but everybody is entitled to their opinion and that I, I i need to feel like i need to read what he wrote because i have no idea <laughs> what this, do you want me to pull this, it up I, well i mean he's not here like he can't defend himself can he no that's true but i mean I, i'm not asking him to defend himself i could just read it to you you can my comeback was real great he did have a good comeback I, I have it pulled up. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, go for it. 
I made it years without hearing a single note of Hamilton because I had it in my head that it was going to be corny as hell and embarrassing. Well, I finally sat down to give it a fair shake, and I was wrong. It's much worse. First off, it's not <laughs> rapping. That's rhyming. Musically, it feels like a goofy 90s production. Secondly, the lyrics lack any poetic subtlety, and the self-awareness character and the self-awareness characters have their own historical context is artless and clunky. Politics aside, I think it's poorly written as a musical, and I don't hate musicals. As a pure piece of pop, it's not particularly catchy or memorable to me. I don't think it as a piece of art in the music. I don't think I don't like it as a piece of art in the musical <laughs> theater genre. Politics front and center. It feels exceptionally hollow to me at best and insidious at worst because it allows uh, a people uh, PMC dingbats to take a wokeness victory lap just because something eth- ethnically diverse slotted into the very white musical theater shaped hole they already had. And then yeah. I will. So, uh, do you want me to read your response, Jessica? <laughs> go for it. Go for it, Jessica Vasami. What a pretentious opinion you have. Maybe you should get tested for COVID. I'm sensing a strong lack of taste. Pew 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 I mean, do, again, do like everyone is entitled on? to their own opinions. Of course they do. No, yeah. we we absolutely do. I mean, everybody has different opinions, and you can still be friends with somebody when you have some different opinions, and that's totally fine. I do think there are two different conversations to this, though, because Hamilton, the musical, is just. It's a musical. It's a piece of art. There is the side of it of like criticizing the talent in the show and their acting and singing and music and lyrics. And then there's the other side, which is the story, the historical accuracy, everything else that's kind of coming under fire right now, which is a completely different conversation, in my opinion. But those actors and their voices and their talent um, were amazing. So you can't, yeah, I feel for me, like- you can't take that away. I feel like also musicals in general are always going to be a little corny. And that's kind of just like the nature of musicals is like, yes. of course, if, if you're not into that kind of genre, it's going to feel very over the top, very corny, very cheesy. Are you, are you uh, saying that uh, Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny is, is a corny movie? <laughs> I haven't seen that. Well, that's a, that's like a straight <laughs> comedy, though, right? So yeah. it's cool. I mean the songs or whatever. I would say it's the like songs, a yeah. it's very self cool. Yeah, but comedy. it's it's self aware. It's like, it's like tongue like, in cheek. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like that movie way too much. I actually really like that movie. I I need to rewatch that. I've haven't uh thought about that movie in years. It's it's real dumb. It's not like a great movie, but oh, it's pretty funny Gavin, just to slop on. You know me. I love my dumb movies that I slop on. <laughs> I yeah. love Island. I watch Love Island. I man, love still haven't shit. seen that. Oh, man. I've been mm. watching such trash TV. It's so bad. This episode of the Rooster Podcast is brought to you by Babbel. Learning a language has always been on my to-do list. And looking around at our current situation, I now realize there's no better time to start. If you're looking to learn a new language, Babbel can help you become a fluent speaker faster than you think. Babbel is proven to get you speaking a language within weeks. Babbel designs their courses with real world conversation in mind, letting you learn every day practical conversations that you will actually use. The daily lessons are 10 to 15 minutes and start by teaching you words and phrases. Then sentences gradually get more complex. Soon you're practicing short conversations. Uh, Lessons are thoughtfully created by over 100 language experts and their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective across multiple studies. Can't get better than that. They even have speech recognition technology that helps improve your pronunciation and accent. With Babbel, you could choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German, and Babbel is available as an app or online, so your progress will be synced across all devices. Right now, when you purchase a three-month subscription, Babbel will give our listeners an additional three months for free with promo code Rooster Teeth, of course. That's three additional months for free if you go to babbel.com and use the promo code Rooster Teeth on your three-month subscription. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com, promo code Rooster Teeth. Thank you, Babel. I need to watch I, some uh, good stuff. There's a new movie on Netflix called, uh, what's it called? Uh, Eurovision, I believe. It's with um, Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams. It's like a new comedy movie. And Trevor and I started watching it last night. And it's a two hour and eight minute, two hour, 10 minute movie or so. We got an hour in and both of us were just like, do you feel like watching this still? Are you feeling this at all? And both of us were like, nah, dude, like this isn't, 
it did not get it. Like, it was just missing the mark on so many levels because you compare it to like other Will Ferrell comedies and stuff like, and stuff of that nature. And when it just like doesn't hit the mark, it's just disappointing. It had potential. Do you think it, any of it has to do with not seeing it in theaters? I don't think so. I feel like, you know, it's a, a movie about these two people from Iceland who have dreams about being on, is it Eurovision, right, Gavin? I... Like music competition? Yeah, the Eurovision Song better. Contest. Yeah. Is that a thing? Uh, yeah. 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 And they it's even like had people come back for it. Like in, in the in the movie, they had like some um, cameos of people that have won in the past, I believe. Oh, really? I, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. There's that one scene, the party scene, and they like focused on these key people. I'm like, who are these people? And then I realized, oh, they're the... Oh. Yeah. That's pretty good. I, I did not know that, but... Yeah. Yeah, it's just they were doing these like Icelandic accents the whole time that were like funny at first, but then it just became a little cringy and just mm -hmm. it was it was like too it was almost too dramatic to be a comedy. Like there were some moments where you're just like, this isn't this is just awkward and not funny. I don't get it. Yeah, but and maybe I was in the wrong state of mind. With the equivalent, yeah, be... and it became more of like Rachel McAdams' story in the yeah. end. So Would the know, equivalent be so like making a movie about American Idol? No. Is it what? Um, well, well, I mean, it's like one every country brings a song. Oh, like they yeah. do contests within the country, and then each and country pick picks like, a like their best song, and then they mm -hmm. all perform them, and then there's a bunch of like so, so, tactical voting. So it's sort of like that Rick and Morty episode. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't seen that one. Uh, I haven't seen that. What is the movie that you watched at the cinema that? had the most laughter from the people around you uh oh god i i don't know if it's because i was in like a good state of mind that it felt like everyone was laughing a lot more but it's when i went to see uh wedding crashers if you guys remember um, that movie yeah yeah i remember just the whole theater was cracking up and i was like in tears that whole time the, i don't know was... i don't know i saw <laughs> the, the most laughter I heard was I, I saw Bruce Almighty and the bit where he's controlling Steve Carell. Dude, that was literally People the second like, thing I was wow. thinking of in my head. That moment when he was yeah. like, how did that be? And the thing is, it's like England, <laughs> England isn't as vocal. I feel like big crowds of English people won't necessarily laugh or applause during a movie like Americans do all the time. Uh -huh. But people were like falling out of their chairs. And just screaming with laughter is amazing. And it is like a really not, funny It's the thing. teleprompter scene, right? When he's changing yeah. what, what the teleprompter I, says. Yeah, I, that scene in particular, I remember laughing so hard in the theater at. Did you ever see the like the extended version of that scene? No. Uh -huh. It gets like really dark. Like it's all like funny and he does all the funny stuff and like misreading the teleprompter. But then he just gets this massive nosebleed. And his hair catches on fire, and he's just like spewing blood, and he's burning, <laughs> what? And screaming. And I guess I feel they like cut that would it take because, away. <laughs> yeah, I think they cut it for that reason because it just takes a turn, and it's just incredibly dark. And then he's just wheeled off, covered in blood. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> what? Yeah. I mean, Anchorman yeah. was one that was great. Also, the the Hangover for some reason was one that I mean, I think the Hangover's funny, but. That one got a lot of laughs, I remember. But there's also one recently that I saw within like the last three years, and I just can't think of it. A comedy, I assume. A comedy, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hangover was a good like... one. That that I remember a lot of people laughing when I saw. Yeah, that too. Hangover. I... Like it to me, it was <clears throat> when I was laughing the most. Literally, when they woke up the next morning and you see their entire <laughs> their hotel room, something's like kind of like on fire, you know. Ed Helm's tooth is gone. There's a tiger in the bathroom. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> what did you do last night? <laughs> Man, now I want to watch that movie again, too. Yeah. Bruce Almighty is, is such a good movie. If if you guys haven't seen Bruce it Almighty, is, it it's is actually good. like such a underrated is it, is it comedy. I haven't seen I it in a long time. I think it holds up. I think there it probably does. are some jokes like... Man, it's crazy watching movies and comedy specials now with like how different things are in 2020 and hearing jokes mm -hmm. and comments no. made that you're just like, oh, that's not going to age well. Or it hasn't aged well. <laughs> hasn't aged. Yeah. yeah, or it hasn't aged well since. And like, obviously, we've been making content for 
almost 18 years at this point. Like there's going to be some stuff we've said or done in the past that hasn't aged well, but it's crazy yeah. to see stuff that has come out like in the last two or three years that even jokes made there. It's like, ooh, can't really yeah. do that anymore, dude. Well, yeah, Gavin knows this. There's changing a, all the time. Yeah. There's a comedian, Chris D'Elia, that I just watched his recent um, stand-up special on Netflix. And who this else did the, you make watch it? I made Gavin watch it. <laughs> um, so... I thought it was so funny. I laughed throughout the entire thing. And then come to find out like a month ago, actually, no, it's probably a little bit more recent, found out all these sexual assault, assault charges against him and underage girls. And I was like, cut. So on a slightly different level though. That stuff wasn't really uh, ever acceptable. <laughs> That's not really aged badly. That's just awful. His sexual I mean, assault just, didn't age well. Maybe no, like, no, no, no. I'm, the I'm just saying that times like I, or something. It's it's hard for me to watch his stuff now, which is so unfortunate because he's not a good person. So that's just like real mm. shitty. Something that made me well, laugh once, can't anymore. It's also, I don't know so. about you guys, but I feel weird now about Harry Potter because of J.K. Rowling oh, being yeah. super transphobic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that like a full double down? Is she just st still going at it? Or I guess she... she claims she, she claims that she's not transphobic, but she has like certain thoughts about okay. trans people that are so backwards. And so just if you I don't know why you would think that and publish that as such a public figure, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. But like, I, I don't think she's doubled down on it, but she's liked tweets and stuff like that. And I think she commented on it again, like trying to clear the air on it a little more. But it just having such a bad take on it is just so weird to me for someone who writes books like she does. Mm. Like the Harry yeah. Potter series is like life changing and it, yeah. it teaches people so much about so many things. And like <clears throat> to be written by a person who has that kind of viewpoint is very strange to me. I just don't, I just don't see the point in the, in the approach of it. Like uh, even if she's against that, why go out of your way to chime in on that whole thing when like what what is who's wronged her to <laughs> i just don't understand the the catalyst for her being like you know what <laughs> here's how i feel it's like why 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 even get involved it's yeah, so bizarre yeah, I, yeah. I, who like who, who's i don't know i have a <laughs> she also chose like... such an interesting time to bring it up like with already so much going on in the world and so so much clashing of opinions and stuff going on and the world falling apart and yeah, some changes happening be like, for the better. Yeah, it just shit's to, yeah. on fire. You know what? Let's throw some gas Go in on trans rights today. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah, like it's just yeah. yeah, a lot of people in the chat are saying turf, which <clears throat> I forget what that stands for. Um, turf. What does that say? Yeah, for? they even said that she triple yeah she even came out recently didn't she make another statement too like out of the blue i don't know trans she... exclusionary radical feminist yeah that's what it is it's yeah it's essentially like a feminist who oh, I see. won't qualify <laughs> trans women as women uh yeah now, in, in hardcore super mini -golf, damaging and super wrong I, in hardcore mini golf i was a turf but a completely different kind. <laughs> <laughs> t u r f yeah <laughs> that's the one you were you were some grass Mm -hmm. that was, yeah, I was, yeah, I, I was, Astro turn. I was, I mm -hmm. was, well, not mad, but annoyed because I, <laughs> me and Gavin, whenever it was like, oh, you're going to be a hardcore mini golf, mini golf uh, what do you want your costume to be? I emailed the exact same costume as Gavin had. <laughs> and Erica, who does her costume, she was like, oh, sorry, Gavin called that like 20 minutes ago. Yeah, and I, I love like, how you guys both had the same idea, which is so <laughs> funny because constantly, like Chris is compared, like Chris is like, oh, uh, Chris is the Gavin of Rooster Teeth, and Gavin is the Chris of I, Achievement Hunter. Oh, okay. you're, you're each other. <laughs> I thought I was the Gavin of Rooster. Or I think that I, I <laughs> right. the, the American versus right. British. This is yeah, this I, is a fun game. Who would we be, Rooster Teeth AH, ha our compared person, our or mm -hmm. double? Do you know what I'm saying? Like our counterparts in- uh, Our Jim counterparts, that's, that's what I mean. So Chris and Gavin. I would say uh, Jessica would be the Jeremy of Rooster Teeth mm -hmm. in Achievement Hunter. Oh, Was that the question? Okay. What am I? Yeah. Who would I be? Like, uh... You would be definitely Jack Patillo. 
Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jack. Jack doesn't say dill hole anymore, does he? He doesn't say dill. No, not as much. I think dill Eric, hole. Eric is writing. Eric is writing mm. Trevor, and I'm surprised you didn't say Trevor because essentially we have very similar thought, positions. Oh, yeah, I thought you would say Trevor too. I, I don't know. I feel like uh, I feel like we all change. Like it depends on what video we're doing and what scenario we're yeah. in. But I feel like we could all be different personalities at different times. Yeah, for sure. I don't I, know was, Jer Jeremy super well, so I don't know what. Well, happens. I was just I've basing also, that on like he's you know musical. He's like talented mm, in that sort of uh, mm -hmm. performing way. He is, yeah. And I feel like you are, but mm -hmm. um, the the turf outfit. I, I guess I just hadn't replied because I just had email off. I hadn't replied to the email about what I wanted my costume to be. So yeah, Erica slacked me, and I was just like, "Can you make a costume out of the turf?" And she was like, okay. And then Chris, like 20 minutes later, sends me the screenshot of Erica telling him that he can't have the same outfit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I liked yours, Chris. You were, uh, you were a robot. Oh, yeah. I had, I, she, and she did a fantastic job with that outfit. And I had fun with it. I was, but I was just mad because I had, I had like, I had like, wrote, I think the reason you got it was because I spent too much time writing my email describing what I was thinking it would look like. <laughs> I think my question to her was, can I be tough? <laughs> so essentially, Chris, if you just spent less time trying to be anal about it, you probably would have gotten well, it. Well, I was trying to be clear Gavin. so that it was like less confused. You know, like I was like, or find, I found examples of what a turf man would look like. Yeah, I felt bad too, because uh, I feel like you would have pulled off the turf a, a bit better. Well, Although, you did, I think you did a good job with the turf. I, I feel like uh, it's in episode two. But uh, I did some pretty good shots off myself, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. You, yeah. Definitely Fiona did too. Yeah. You guys were also really guys... funny together, you and Fiona. Yeah. Oh man, I was sad that it was elimination. I wanted to do <laughs> I wanted to do every I wanted to be every round with, with me and Fiona. <laughs> yeah. You guys were also taking shots. You were like shots and then also shots. Yeah. Both. Shots oh yeah. This, this got cut, but at one point there we came across mm -hmm. like Fiona's like a flask of like alcohol and then <laughs> oh yes and we're like and i was like fuel and i just drank a bunch of it and then knocked it and <laughs> yeah. i got a hole in one <laughs> they, yeah you did that Wait, you did that, that like i was like yeah. we filmed that right before we went into quarantine for covid and you chugged someone else's drink <laughs> I, that you I, found on the ground i I, I wasn't true. thinking it. i was in character oh Chris. Okay. i was yeah. in character okay. and, mm -hmm. and i was like overpowered too much fuel and, and, and i just whacked the ball and it was a hole in one and i was so i was yeah. so proud oh and that didn't make it in yeah well i mean it, well, lots of stuff gets cut always yeah yeah, yeah. that's true yeah. i felt yeah, I bad erica, about that erica did such a great job on all the costumes erica slay um she she's did. been doing costumes for rooster teeth for years at this point she did like 11 little roosters she's done like laser team and blood fest all, like all the million dollars butt costumes oh, everything remember million she's, dollars butt? oh yeah so good and it's so funny because she's had to dirty me up so many times yes eric uh yeah real quick and i think we talked about this on an off topic uh michael and i when chris showed up and was going to be the robot <laughs> He started having ideas about what to change the costume to. And Erica <laughs> is very nice. Very patient. But she, but she was not thrilled with Chris's last minute changes <laughs> to his robot costume as he walked up late to the shoot. It I wasn't late. Was I wasn't late. Awesome. She also had, I think, like a week or less to put together 20, how many? 12? 18 yeah, she, costumes, mm -hmm. something crazy she, like that. This is correct. Yep. So, and Chris being like, I would like a change. Well, now. <laughs> it was not so much a change as a subtraction, which is a change. Which is a I, change. Well, I had, Chris, you are so you know, I never tried to be fair. Stuff. I never tried it. I don't think I tried it on in its full thing because it was such a short thing, but I didn't want to wear pants <laughs> because I thought it was funnier showing my bare legs poking out the bottom that's funny okay that's and that was change. that and that was like I, I because i was like this is funnier rather than wearing like silver like uh like a bodysuit underneath it if i'm wearing like if i'm in like my underwear or i think i wore some shorts 
some shorts underneath it. It's way funnier seeing my my like hairy legs poking out. I uh, the first the very first thing I did after I got changed was you know film the little intro and then we did the first hole. The first thing I did was just lie down on the ground, and it got that costume got completely waterlogged. Like it was pissing <laughs> oh it down with rain. And I guess it all soaked into the real AstroTurf and then it's it seeped into my back. <laughs> Hole two, I'm face down, so it all seeped into my front. And I was just like clammy and just damp all day. It yeah, because it awful. rained the first day too. It rained the whole time. I can't believe we didn't postpone it. It was miserable. We, we could postpone because it because we had to we had to get ready for COVID. Yeah. Start quarantining. But True. uh I remember the rain very well because I was covered in like this dirt, this like makeup dirt that they mm -hmm. use for movies and, and shows and stuff. And that stuff doesn't react to water very well. It got like very kind of sticky and clammy and stuff like that and started like bunching up in certain areas. Like I was finding it like in crevices all over my body. It was no bueno, oh, but it, yeah. I think it was worth it for the bit. <laughs> yeah. What did you think I of my English accent, Gavin? Oh, amazing. I thought you were from, you know, the, the dirty streets of London. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when Eric came to set, I was I was one of the producers on Minigolf and me and Ezra had like gone over all these rules and regulations on how the game would go. And Eric's like, I'm just kicking the ball. I'm like, oh, um, well, he should probably use his putt. And then you, Eric's just like, no, I'm kicking it. I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. That's what's up. And he kicks it the entire way. And it was one of the, it was one of my favorite things. <laughs> just go walking up and just kick. <laughs> It was a good bit. Let me let me tell the other side of that story because it was me please, please going, do. "Hey, I want to kick the ball," and then it was half an hour and a half dozen <laughs> producers coming up to me going, "Well, you're going to have to take a stroke penalty," and me going, "I don't care. I don't. This isn't. I'm not winning anything." Eric you know? showed up for the day. Like yeah. he was not intending to come back. I know. That. So we kept. So I just kept going. Okay, well, I'm just going to kick it, and then they would run away. And then they would come back and go, okay, so if you kick it, you're going to have to, you have to make sure, is there any way we can use the putter on your foot? I don't care. Sure. Whatever. And then it just went around for half an hour until it just landed on, okay, yeah, you can kick the ball. It's fine. <laughs> well, now, oh, yeah. wait, we aren't actually playing a real game of golf. Yeah. Wait, well, now taking my pants off, does it sound so crazy? <laughs> it was amazing. I, honestly, the whole shoot was so different. Than what I thought it'd be. I thought it would be less serious because it was actually like the rules in place. I felt like maybe if if someone did a shit shot, they might be able to just like do do their bit again for like entertainment's sake. Like it might be funnier if the ball goes in. No, nope, it was just like if you didn't get it in, that's it. You move on. That that was how many strokes you had. Move on. I was like, damn. So I was like really happy when I was actually hitting good shots off myself yeah. because. Yeah. There wasn't any time to like redo it. It was like that is, the, that is the only shot I took off my back in that hole, and that's what happened. So I was like, "Man, this is so yeah." Nice. See, or else, or else we would have been there all day because if you guys are just gonna fuck around on each hole, you know, we would have been there all day. You would have never that's gotten true. it in. That's so that's why it's just like or, we gave you a limit of seven. Or if you're just really shit at golf like me, you just take <laughs> yeah. long unintentionally. Yeah, man, that was so frustrating when you'd be like getting close to the hole and you just like thwack it and it would go. Yep. Yeah. Every time, man. Yeah. I don't uh, know. This episode of the Rooster Teeth podcast is brought to you by Felix Gray. It's 2020. We've got devices in every corner of our lives and there's no cutting back. I've got my phone. My TV, game consoles, office setup, I even have a monitor in front of me right now. But with every screen comes another source that emits blue light. Now, what is blue light, you may be asking? It's the light that is emitted from digital screens, and if too much of it, uh, if you get too much of it, it could cause problems. If you're like me, you may also have common symptoms uh, that you get with excessive screen time, like eye strain, headaches, dry or tired eyes, I get all of that because of all the blue light. Uh, and blue light at night can even lower the production of melatonin, the hormone that regulates your sleep. The solution to this is Felix Grey. Felix Grey blue light filtering glasses filters out 90% of blue light in, most, in the most damaging range and eliminates 99% of glare through a proprietary industry-leading lens technology only available with Felix Grey. 
Felix Grey frames are also hand finished from durable, super lightweight Italian acetate. And ordering online is super easy. Glasses ship directly to you with hard case and lens cloth included. Try them for 30 days risk free. If your screens aren't easier on your eyes, you could send them back for a full refund. Go to felixgrayglasses.com slash rooster for the absolute best quality blue light filtering glasses on the market. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash rooster. Shipping and returns are totally free at Felix Gray and also they're amazing. So go to felixgrayglasses.com slash rooster. Go check them out. I'm I'm glad it played out as it did because I don't think I would have had any more bits to do if I kept playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, like I didn't I even bring any, out. I didn't even bring any bits aside from I'm I've got turf on me. <laughs> That's probably honestly the way to have gone. It's just like you're just in a costume and you're just playing yourself. Because I was trying to play a character, and I, like by the end of it, I was like. I, I don't know what else to say. I don't, I'm done. I'm tapped out of jokes on yeah, this Yeah, I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest. I didn't know how heavily people were going, because I, I was absolutely nothing to do with any of the meetings or the planning. I just showed up, paired up with Fiona. That's, that's and, how you usually, and that's went. how it is usually with you, Gavin. Yeah, yeah, I like how you say that as if that's different than part I know. of the course. <laughs> <laughs> no, but usually, you, you know, I might talk to someone about, oh, hey, what are you going to do? Oh, okay, what are you going to do? I hadn't, I hadn't spoken to a single person. I, I, I show up, Fiona's a ballerina. The only thing we planned was we're going to be drinking. But I didn't realize <laughs> that people were going like... That's not true. We talked about hot. how we were both going to be turf. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I found out through Erica. But basically, yeah, every, some people were going all in on like keeping up these characters. I was like, oh shit, maybe I should have gone a little harder than just lying down sometimes. And being <laughs> but thankfully, you know, it, I was with Fiona who was just sort of her, you know, her angry self. So it was fine. And you guys have I a love good, the, like bond. <laughs> the yeah, yeah, air, horn, air horn moment was great. I won't spoil it for anybody, but uh, yeah. How, Go how check out the episode with Gavin and Fiona. I think f- three? No, okay. two. I think the fourth episode comes out, fourth or fifth episode comes out this week, and I think there are six total. I can't wait to, yeah, the, the, the last one. Mm-hmm. That's good. Oh, oh, <laughs> That's good. good. Keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't believe yeah. that was the last thing we did before quarantine. Oh, God, we've been here for so long. I miss everybody. I what month is it now? It's July. It's July. Dude, I did not. Days are getting like, shorter. Having left work on that last day, I think, because we did the podcast March thirty, March 23rd, and then we came, a couple of us came in the next day just to shoot, like, a bunch of RT Life videos and hard mm-hmm. modes and stuff like that, just to, like, bank up a couple things. Mm-hmm. And, like, leaving that day, I was like, oh, you know, like, maybe this will be, like, two, three months or something like that. But I was like... Uh, we're not going to go into the summer with this thing, are we? And then now we're starting the summer and I'm like, oh, we're definitely not getting back to normal until 2021 easily. I'll, I'll be honest that the moment this all started and it was like, oh, you know, the world's going to take this very well. Some of the world will take this very seriously. And we all went <laughs> home. I, I feel like I always saw the 18 months till the vaccine that that immediately was like, that's my number. That's I'm not going to assume we're going to be out of this for 18 months. So like really? every time it was pushed back and like, oh no, no, we're, we're going to be working from home until July. Oh no, September, it keeps going back. I've, I've just come to expect it until at least 18 months. And I feel like I can't be surprised unless it goes beyond 18 months. Yeah. Then I'll be like, Which man, this is going on a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I hear, I hear that. I know that they're still working on a vaccine, but I also hear that the, I think it was Barb, was it you? Somebody that told me that the antibodies are what they're really banking on. It could be wrong. Uh, I did not. I didn't say that, but I wouldn't be surprised okay. if there's a lot more information now because yeah. of antibodies existing mm-hmm. and having more information yeah. on it. I mean, the 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 thing that scares me the most about COVID, and I don't know who had uh, an hour and two minutes on the clock for us discussing COVID on your uh, bets, but <laughs> I feel like the the thing that scares me the most is that we don't know the long term effects. Like, obviously, we've heard how it ranges in terms of how people deal with it if they get it. Like Mm -hmm. it could be completely asymptomatic. You could be kind of like feeling unwell for a while to like dying, going Mm -hmm. to the hospital and and dying. Um, Like that Broadway star that just died. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, that's scary in itself. But to me, also, the scary thing is what the long term effects are, like how it actually affects <clears throat> your lungs or any other internal organs or anything else long term in your life. They obviously do not have very yeah. much information on this disease still. And so they don't know what it's going to do long term. And that to me, like, even if you're asymptomatic, it could probably still have terrible effects on you for all we know. Yeah. And that and to me is was, freaking scary. That's what I was reading about the, the guy that sadly passed away yesterday after battling it for like 95 days. I know. Days, yeah. Is that it's they said awful. that he had like lung scarring of someone who had been smoking for like fifty years? Yeah, they, and like, they amputated his damage. leg. Oh, damn. Yeah, they uh, they also amputate, uh, amputated his leg, and apparently he didn't have any underlying diseases, which makes it even scarier because I I assume more young people don't have as many underlying diseases as older people, and it could just happen. And that's the, that's the mentality that I think a lot of people have is just like, well, it won't happen to me the same way as like, Oh, a car crash won't happen to me or this. A lot of young people think that they're invincible, but it absolutely can happen to you and to other people around you. So mm -hmm. to take it seriously, yeah, I, saw, <laughs> I saw someone respond to something about wearing masks. You know, we're very vocal about wearing your masks. If you're out in public or going to be near anybody. Um, and I saw someone, responding saying oh well i'm only 22 and i only hang out with people my age it's like okay but mm -hmm. those people hang out with other people potentially their family members potentially family members who might see older family members or other relatives or other people or other grocery store workers or other people working that they interact with like it's not just oh i've only interacted with this group of people and that's it so i don't i don't have to be concerned but those people are also interacting with other people so if someone happens to catch it and is asymptomatic it could spread like wildfire so it's yeah fucking dangerous my some god people are, some people are saying stuff in chat that is triggering my anxiety T tcbm who is that i know that's one of our our people but they're saying, I heard that a 19 year old had a stroke a few weeks after recovering from COVID and it triggers diabetes in people. Yeah, that's making my anxiety just not happy. You, Ugh, you yeah. really, I really it. don't want it. You don't want the people don't. you know to get it. You don't, you don't want right. people to get it. It's, it's, it could be awful. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to take a chance. <laughs> I, I wonder, because there's been so many like job losses i do wonder about like which jobs are like increasing because of like the situation that we're in you know i'm sure like postmates and uber eats and yeah Instacart, like, like that a bunch of, of delivery stuff. services we were talking earlier about like we bet the the like sign up for four-year colleges are way down but um community college is way up because you're not getting mm -hmm. you're like oh well why not take you know my first year online if it's, it's going to be online regardless and i'm not getting that that quintessential college experience or like i was like oh i, I bet you like i wonder if like therapists are doing really well right now because there's so many like people stressed out and anxious about so many things in the world where like it's a good time to be in in a, a, a therapist and probably a bad time to own a gym or an arcade or something yeah like that yeah. where, where you go to touch everything <laughs> yeah bad business time for that yeah yeah I, I do wonder i know there's been i don't know if you guys watch john oliver last week tonight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm like waiting for any responses there uh, <laughs> but he uh he had a special about um like uh mortgage and rent payment and stuff like that and it's just fascinating to me that the government hasn't, as far as I know, been looking into any sort of relief for that because having people still having to pay mortgage payments or rent payments during this time, especially when there is a record breaking amount of uh, uh, what's it called unemployment going on, mm -hmm. like to expect people to still be able to pay their payments is just insane. And especially at an unprecedented time like this. Uh, so I just it concerns me that that hasn't been figured out, but I really hope that there's some solution that could be had like some sort of rent or mortgage forgiveness while I this know. is happening. If, if yeah. And not could... like, not like you owe what you didn't pay for a few months. Cause that's not going to solve anything, but more of just like tacking on a payment to the end of your mortgage mm -hmm. versus, Oh, if you didn't pay for two months, now you owe two months mm -hmm. when you pay next time type thing. Mm -hmm. 
if you could pay a, an amount to just fall asleep for a year, you wake up exactly one year from now. You, you haven't aged a year. You just like skipped a year. Oh yeah. How much, how much would you pay? <laughs> Um, would I get the, would I get the ear back like in the end? Yeah, yeah. You don't have an age. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no. You're you're the same. You're the same age as you are today. Okay. You just you just missed everything that happened in that year. So you have to pay though to do it. Yeah. And you're asking us how much would we pay? Yeah, like what would that be worth if you could just skip this? <laughs> yeah. God. You could, they, they'd find a, a hole in the ground somewhere. You just lie down in it. No one would find you. <laughs> And then I mean, the thing is, is like, it's still, I think while it's really horrible and really like devastating every day just to be alive, <laughs> it's also like, <laughs> it's still also like life and it's part of our history now and it's part of like sure. our experiences and like how the world changes and evolves over the next few years because of this is going to be so important. And I think like, I, you know, people talk about going back to normal all the time. I, there is no normal. We're not, mm -hmm. we're never going back to the way things used to be. Things are going to change. There's going to be different processes in place. There's going to be different ways of doing things, different ways of working. You know, everything is going to be different in one way or another. And so I feel like going to sleep and ignoring everything until things are safe again, I feel like it'd be important to experience that. I don't I know. Agree. Could, could I agree. I like agree. I remember a... Matt Damon saying something like he's like there's a lot of people complaining that we can't go out and do all these things he's like we're being asked to stay home where there are many people in the world that have far less than we do and don't have these experiences or an, a nice place to live in with a tv and stuff and we're over here complaining because we have to stay home so uh, yeah i don't think i'd spend any money i'm just gonna live through it yeah i mean yeah. i would do the same i wouldn't want to miss out on like family members dying and you know i missed i i missed the last bit of their life because i was asleep in a hole i, f I feel like if i had kids <laughs> that you too, paid I for <laughs> that i paid for if i have kids i definitely wouldn't do it unless they would all come in the hole as well come on kid <laughs> get in the but hole it's interesting it's but interesting daddy, wanting to it's called a bunker <laughs> that's a hole We've it's established. just interesting wanting time to speed up though well like just wanting it to be over sooner but you also want to experience everything along with everyone else it's a I weird will, feeling i will say that it some of the hardest time. experiences of my life are also some of the most worthwhile you know like yeah. and i mean that in the sense like you learn a lot you grow you you know you, you when things are super easy it like you don't you don't grow as much maybe i don't know i mean i yeah, agree to yeah. an extent but you can also you know like the awful awful shit you I feel like it's just just bad. Oh yeah, I'm not saying it's like good. It's definitely bad. Yeah. But like <laughs> it's definitely life, bad. But life experience wise, I think is kind of like you do that you can gain something from bad experiences. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe yeah. I'd take like um, a two week bunker nap. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be nice. Do it I could go chunks. for for a two week bunker <laughs> nap. We were just talking about how like we just had a three day weekend. Uh, this past weekend, which is also so weird because it was going to be the original date for RTX 2020 this last weekend, which I'm sure you guys saw people posting about this week. But man, that is there is another uh, like Trevor and I were talking about this. There is an alternate reality. We were talking about this like on Friday night where he was like, there's an alternate reality where I'm on stage talking about Chima Hunter to thousands of people. <laughs> but this is not that reality right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, man, that's. That's strange. Strange to think about how different things would have been if this never spread, if this never happened. Um, but now, like, I don't know if I'll be able to adapt very quickly when things do start to get safe again. Like, even the thought of flying somewhere kind of creeps me out. I feel like I, I'm almost becoming agoraphobic to an extent. Yeah, I still think I'll wear a mask out for a while, even when they say uh, it's gone. How will you breathe, Jessica? Right. <laughs> <laughs> think of all the think of all the CO2 you're going to be you inhaling. Know, you know how when everyone who's like commuting through Tokyo on the on like the trains and they've all got masks on, you know how every yeah. day they just pass out on the ground? Yeah. And you know and how like surgeons like that wear every... masks for like hours yeah. on end while they're yeah. in the operating room, you know how yeah. they just pass out? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just so silly. Oh, I feel like God. I feel like flying is the thing that, unfortunately, is 
I, I don't know. Like, you can't social distance on a plane. It's impossible. Yeah. It's, no. It's, yeah. And you can... also the oxygen is like the, the fucking like running through the entire mm -hmm. plane, like circulating, essentially. Like it's not yeah. going. Yeah. You're breathing uh, other people's air, the same which tube. is the dangerous thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was actually really debating like early on, like, should I just go to England? And, oh, and at the time there was already like, you know, two weeks quarantine before you can see anyone. And then I would be looking at another two weeks quarantine here before I can see anyone on the way back. So I'd be like binning a month basically just to be in England for a bit. But it just was a bit too scary. Like I feel like being on a plane is just terrifying right now. Yeah. Like, even though I yeah. really want to see my family in, in England, I just, I can it's technically go because I have the passport that still lets me in. But I just yeah. feel like My it's God, not worth it's it. Like, terrifying. I know it's it's must be so hard for people, especially if they can't visit family or if they're in a, like a long distance relationship and they haven't been able to see their significant other in months at this point. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I can't imagine how difficult that is. But it's also like, is it worth the risk? Is it, you know, like essentially you're putting yourself at risk of death. I mean, of course, anything you do in life is always putting you yeah. at risk for that. But like serious complications, uh, infecting other people, like there's so much that could happen. Did, like I, so. I, I eventually obviously decided like I wasn't going to go. I'm just going to stay here and ride it out. But then that is what makes me so extra frustrated when you see a beach absolutely rammed or like people in bars and it's like there's there's no sacrifice that none of these people are sacrificing anything. They're just treating it like nothing's happening. It's, it makes it it's really... Like, a lot of people don't believe around. in it, too. It yeah. didn't go away. Like, it didn't go anywhere. It's still, yeah. like... Did, especially a lot of here. Like, don't... people people are, you know, doing all the whole, like, oh, we're going to start, you know, opening back up. It's like, it's literally the worst it's ever been. Like, why were you at home before if, yeah. if, if you want to go in now? now? It's worse now. What? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. They, people they're literally people don't believe in it or they're just like oh the the death rate is not that high so it'll be fine and and like the young kids are like oh i'll i'll get over it it's like oh my god i honestly oh. i feel slightly more sorry for people living in this country um not because of the way it's being handled which is awful but because it's such a damn big country like i feel like when i was in england you could drive anywhere in the country in like a day i couldn't drive but you know other <laughs> people would drive. But it's like it's so big and inconvenient to go somewhere without flying. It's like, yeah, my God, I can't imagine living on the on the wrong side of this country from my family. I feel I for those feel people like the most. There's there's so much that I think us as a society deals with, uh, like on a regular basis that we're used to, like blowing up really big on social media and everyone's talking about it for like a couple of days or a couple of weeks, and then everyone kind of moves on to the next thing. And I feel like. COVID was one of those things where people like got all up in arms about it for a few weeks or a few months. And then like at one point they're just like, I'm bored of this. Like, let's, let's go back out. Yeah. Like essentially just like, I want to move on from this, even though this is something that's going to be yeah. super and then, and then relevant, the, very long time. And then the people mm -hmm. who are saying, don't go outside, always wear a mask, become like the enemy of those people. But it's like, do you think the, the wear mask people and the stay indoors people want to be staying indoors? <laughs> no, no one wants it. It's like, yeah. it, where's the, where's the community? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> a lot of people off. are making this, they're, they're making this political when it's not political. It's just, it just is what it is. It's science. Um, it's so literally it's, science. I don't, I, yeah, it's science. I'm like, why are you making this political? Like they think that the liberals are all COVID crazy and stuff. I'm like, what? It just, it is what it is. I don't there, know. It's there this, whether you believe in it or not. It's the same as climate change. Yeah, there's yeah. This one video like, that it's it's politicized when it shouldn't be. But I, I think every, everything is politicized these days, it seems like um, no yeah. matter like if, if it's something that could be debated one way or the other, it's politicized somehow. But I saw this one video that was like really disturbing of this uh, woman in some grocery store who was refusing to wear her mask. And she was like screaming about something and she was storming out of there and like slamming stuff around. And she said something about how like you democratic pussies or like you democratic assholes or something like that and it's like it's not democratic versus republic it's like not it has nothing to do with that it's just caring about mm -hmm. the safety of yourself and others specifically others which i think is yeah. like the tough point to get across and i know i go on a tangent about this every single freaking podcast but it's something that i'm so just constantly annoyed with and bothered by and i just i cannot grasp the idea that this is such 
a hardship and so hard for people to understand the concept of. And that there are people yeah. still, when I tweet about things, people who are still arguing with me who are following us at Rooster Teeth, and it's like, you know our stance on this. Why, mm -hmm. like... Why would it's you still all be following? As soon as Kanye gets gets in the in the White House, <laughs> everything will be fixed. Oh my God! Gonna, don't uh, even <laughs> don't start with that. Oh no no, that's that is so awful. I couldn't think of anything more tone deaf to do <laughs> than to announce you're running for president months before the yeah. election. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to I laugh. Know. I mean, and di dying inside, obviously. But the, the thing that bothers me about external. that is there's going to be people who don't. Obviously, there's tons of people who don't want to vote either for Trump or Biden, totally understand it's your vote, it's whatever you want to do with it. But there are people who are just going to vote for Kanye as a joke and essentially throw away yeah. their vote. Like guys, I know. <laughs> and it's going to be a lot of the, I feel like it's going to be a lot of the younger generation when I feel like otherwise their votes probably would have gone to Biden, which Potentially, is yeah. real, I mean, which is shitty. He should, I feel, I don't know. Who do you think would be the worst celebrity? Well, besides the Trump topic at hand, uh, b besides the obvious, the worst celebrity to be to run for president. Oh God! I think you. I mean, Kanye's you pretty child? bad. What? If, okay. <clears throat> Theoretically, there's no age that you could be president. Okay. Okay. You can, any, you can run at any age. Is it? possible that a child star could be president they'd probably do a better job than trump like like imagine like uh um who is the dookie or whatever the the genius kid or like like there's a there's a uh, he uh the guy that he was a, a kid star he was a he was on a, he was a doctor like a kid doctor who's uh, that i have to look it up Let like me look it doogie hauser uh, yeah like neil patrick harris yes yes he was on a he was a child star and he was a, a genius kid in his show. If he ran for president, people well, he's smart. I mean, he literally that. could run for president now. He's old well, yeah. enough. Well, yeah, now he could. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, if he had ran for president back, like, if we had a child star who was known for being smart. that Because I feel oh. like that's how kind of Trump got elected. He was, like, known for, like, because of TV, known for being a good uh, <laughs> businessman, right? Bad so then you're like, you're, like, he was like, well, on TV, he's a good businessman. He was real smart. And it's there's, like, but if there's a child star who's like, well, I mean, I saw, do you see that episode where he, like, you know, <laughs> he, he uh, you know, he, he did that operation. And he was only, he was only 15. There's someone Imagine what he could do to the <laughs> who I think has a, a worse suggestion. This is Bernie H67 on, on the Rishi site. Piers Morgan. Left. Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan. Well, wasn't born would, in America, can't do it. Would yeah. be terrible. Yeah, oh, I, said, well, I said any age. Any, any, oh, okay. any age. But. You gotta be, uh, yeah, you gotta be 35 and I think born in America. Well, you know, maybe Piers Morgan could, well, you, you know, they fell out, him and Trump. Cause he, oh, um, did Trump, they? Trump unfollowed him. <laughs> he was very, oh, no. <laughs> he was very oh, sad. Oh my God. Him. Wow! But, oh my God! But again, Pierce Morgan's already like po political. Like, I'm thinking like, who's someone who'd be like, what? Who knows nothing about politics? Yeah, yeah. Or, just... or is just like a comp almost like a, a, a oh man, like um, uh, uh, who's the guy from Jackass? Which guy? Johnny I Knoxville. Guess, Johnny Knoxville or something. Well, I mean, not that I, I think Johnny Knoxville is funny, but just someone who's like, this is a dude who's like. That's a bad. That's he has, not the, yeah, like, like he, he has Johnny, no business being there at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that they, not that those people from from Jackass aren't intelligent people, but like if like Johnny Knoxville running for president in well, two thousand two when Jack Jack. No, like, you I, know mean, what I mean that's 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 the argument right there. You just said not that those aren't intelligent people. Yeah, you know, there, there's your average citizen that's an intelligent person. They might, you know, they know about some politics, but that's the point of the presidency is you need to be like, you have to be intelligent and you have to be working in politics since I don't know what age do you start working in I politics? I mean, clearly that is not a criteria. You know, yeah. I, it's not. You had me at the be. intelligence. <laughs> yep, I know, exactly. But yeah. Yeah. It's... You can't just have like some mediocre person. <laughs> If you had to pick one person from Rooster Teeth to be president of the United States, who would you guys oh, pick? Oh man, one person. That can I vote for myself? Question. 
would you want to vote for yourself, Chris? <laughs> would you want to be president? <laughs> well, I, at least I trust myself. I'm going to say <laughs> that I don't know. Okay, g give me, like, because I don't know everybody at Rooster Teeth, and there might be some really awesome people that would be great, but I don't know them. Mm. So give me, give me like, a, a, like, say, out of core age funhouse type thing. Yeah. Um... Who? I feel like Gus would be a pretty obvious answer. Gus a good president. Gus, Gus uh, he does. A, mm -hmm. He's very smart. He's definitely over thirty-five. <laughs> 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 yeah. Was it? Was he? Was he born in? He, was yeah, he yeah. born? I don't know. Yeah. Are you trying to <laughs> figure was he born out Gus in is the American? Yeah. No, I know yeah, he's, he's American, but you no, know, he's he was born like on the border, right? Like very. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he's he's born in America. Okay. Yeah. I just could for some reason I couldn't remember which side Gus of the border. Good, he was I think Gus is. I think Gus is a good. Uh, that's a good. I thought Gus, Gus. I thought Gus was born in Austin. No, I think he was born in like uh, like a border. Like I um, think Jack was the only person I know of who was born in Austin. He's like fifth generation Austinite. Mm. Something crazy like that. I f yeah, Jack might not be that bad. I think Jack could be a good president. Or Jeff, maybe, I feel like, yeah. would just be like, fuck this. <laughs> Gu yeah, Gus is probably the best. I see a lot of Eric Bedour suggestions in the chat. I don't know about that. I don't know about that either. <laughs> Eric is it. Right. Eric wouldn't even think Eric would be a good president. <laughs> yeah. Garbo. Uh, for um, sure. Yeah, Garbo. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, speaking of Eric. Oh, yeah. Should we should we should talk about this? Um, Jessica, would you like to announce officially? I mean, you know, Eric, Eric and and me, actually, uh, <gasps> will be on on the spot this Wednesday. It's, it's coming back. 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 <laughs> For three episodes, three three episode run special. Three. Uh, That's right. Why three? Because uh, that after three weeks, Chump Lucky comes back. Three. Chump will come back. So it's going up in place of Chump. It'll be live on the Rooster Teeth site, 5 p.m. Central. Um, so all you guys who are joining us right now in chat on RTTV, you'll be able to watch on the spot, come back for a very special three-episode run starting this Wednesday with Jessica and Eric, future president <laughs> of the United States. <laughs> oh, that would be a what? freaking nightmare. What, yeah, what would you do? Oh, okay, wait, wait. I have a new scenario. You go into your hole, yeah, Aww. for a year. You come out. You are elected president. Oh wow, that's a nightmare. You're Not like, I'm just gonna go oh. in this hole. I'm gonna come out in a year, and you know, just skip everything. Somehow, during that year, the 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 world had like coalesced around the idea. It's like, oh, you know, who should be president? Gavin. I mean, he's the, the, the one. Guy, who's a, the guy in the ground. The guy in the hole. <laughs> he has all the answers. He's in the hole. He was clearly smart enough to go in the hole yeah. while he, this thing was going on. <laughs> he'll rise again and lead us. <laughs> yes. And then you come out of the hole and you're like, so what I missed? You're like, well, Mr. President, let me give you a debriefing. I, I'd be like, uh, let me stop you right there. Nope. No, uh -uh. Yeah. And you're like, no, thank you. I'm going to go back in this hole. See you guys in four years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Man, it's... I feel like it's going to be a very interesting next couple months. November is going to be such an interesting. Oh, it's going to be a month. shit show. It's going to be so bad. Uh, that's be probably when I'll have my next panic attack. Is uh, <laughs> yeah. Should I? Do you want me put it on a, it a calendar for us? Yeah, schedule, schedule it. Okay. The night of the election. I, it's gonna just panic. <laughs> this right there. I had a I had a friend tell me the story. They were so they've been seeing a. Th this is oh, this is about going back to the therapist, but this is pre-COVID, right? And this is the before times. Um, I had a friend who was seeing a therapist, and then I think they they I think they like started working with this therapist when they were just getting started. So they were like, is a really kind of like uh, cheap rate for a therapist. And then they were you know they're seeing the therapist, and then the therapist <clears throat> transferred to another like I guess therapist agency i don't know how it works and then okay. they were like oh hey you know like well we're setting up we'll i'll let you know uh whenever we're all set up and you know we'll do an appointment and then they did like 
a couple of weeks like they're like oh hey is there any appointment like sure yeah here, how's this and they like booked an appointment and then they kept like they were having to like make all the effort to schedule the appointments like they weren't and then eventually the therapist just stopped responding and then i was okay. like okay did you get ghosted by your therapist <laughs> like oh they God. like their therapist just stopped <laughs> responding to them about like therapy like oh, are no. they that's, that's okay awful. are they sick maybe no i mean they're fine it was just like a like you know go in to talk you know not like therapist is like physical therapy not a physical thing more just like an emotional mm -hmm. you know therapy mental. therapy mm -hmm. mental therapy and they got ghosted by their therapist and i was like well i'm sorry but that's <laughs> the funniest like most bizarre <laughs> scenario i can imagine for like that's a gonna therapist. be the saddest thing yes yes yeah. i mean and sad like funny and like how crazy that is but the idea of getting a special by... type of therapist just that therapists can see from being so overloaded with other people's problems like is there a type of therapist that's I... designed to deal with therapy problems oh absolutely yeah there are definitely therapists for therapists yeah, it's yeah like, I feel like that'd be really important. Yeah, yeah ha for sure. Having mm -hmm. a, you know, started seeing a yeah. therapist, it's like, it's, it, it's heavy sessions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Also, I wonder what you would if call it's it. like, is it, is it, is it me? I just feel like people don't want me, you know, in their life. And you're like, no, no, it's not you. It's not you, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, uh, sorry, I got a, another appointment. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I don't think we're going like... to make next session. It's like your issues are just way too fucked up. I can't handle you. That would be awful. Therapy, so important right now. If you're able to get oh, it yeah. and find someone who won't ghost you. That would be great. Yeah, uh, non-ghosting yeah. therapist. We do got to yeah, start. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we do got to start yeah. wrapping things up, unfortunately. If you guys have any last minute s comments, Gavin, I totally cut you off. Anyway. That's fine. I was just saying, like, the stigma around that uh, is hopefully going away over time. Uh, I, so. I assume, you know, more people are seeing therapists than you may think. Yeah. Don't, don't I, feel weird about uh, trying it. That's why I think, yeah. that's why I was like, I hope that is a, 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 a a position that is actually had an increase because I feel like it's an important thing right now. Also, armadillos. Armadillos. It's full circle Can't now. Can't forget armadillos. Yep. <laughs> I hope they're on an increase as well. Get a therapy <laughs> armadillo. Yeah. yeah. I don't think Chris, do you have a therapist and do you talk about armadillos with your therapist? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess... Oh, the, sorry. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, well, I don't talk about armadillos. <laughs> I mean, Why don't we... Time. Find out in the post show that we'll tell you all about yeah. after this. I'll tell Thank you, you all my true feelings about armadillos in the post show. <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank thank you guys so much for watching this week's RT podcast. Stay safe, wear your masks, and uh, check. We're we're starting some gameplay content too over at uh, Rooster Teeth Core. So check out our channel uh, starting, I, I believe, this weekend for some new gameplay stuff coming out. So thank you, uh, and we'll see you guys. Next time, stay safe. Love you. Bye.